This is a photo of me when I was about 12. I don't remember too much about these years. I do remember that the biggest drama in my life was that I desperately wanted to play electric guitar, but had no way of getting one. This frustration went on for about a year until one day I got incredibly lucky. My mom and I were traveling and we checked into this crummy old hotel. When we got up to the room, I opened the windows to let in some air. The view was an alleyway filled with dumpsters, and there, on top of one of the dumpsters, was an old classical guitar. I still have this very vivid memory of running down the staircase of that hotel and out into the alleyway to grab it. I was ecstatic. Of course, I brought it home, I learned to play my favorite songs, but they never sounded quite right. Of course, I knew I really needed an electric guitar. So some family friends bought me a guitar pickup. The idea was that eventually I would build an entire instrument myself. Instead, I duct taped the pickup to the sound hole of the acoustic. And this was my first electric guitar. One of the reasons I thought this would work is because even though this guitar was designed for nylon strings, the previous owner had actually put steel strings on it, which you're never supposed to do. Of course, there was still one hurdle. On its own, the pickup didn't make any sound because I didn't have an amplifier. But what I did have was an old stereo system I had found in the trash, a system that came with this, a Radio Shack record preamp. For whatever reason, this little preamp box just happened to have inputs for a microphone. And of course, the first thing I did was plug my makeshift guitar into those mic jacks, and I was blown away. It wasn't exactly the sound I wanted, but it was pretty close. I ended up using that record preamp as a distortion pedal for several years. All of which is why I'm right now in my car driving to Goodwill. I want to recreate that childhood experiment, so the plan is to try to find something. I'm not sure what yet, but whatever it is, let's hope we can use it to produce a similar kind of distortion. I'm just going to walk to the back of the store, past these pixelated people. There's lots of stuff. Basically, I'm looking for anything that has a microphone input. Bonus points if it has a quarter inch jack, like the kind you'd find on an electric guitar. There are a ton of old DVD players, old VCRs, and what is this? It seems to be an old tape deck, and it's got two microphone inputs. This looks perfect. Let's bring it home and check it out. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna plug in a microphone just to see if this works as a tape deck. So I've managed to find some information about this. It's from 1975. Apparently these kinds of top-loading tape decks were much more common in the mid-70s than in the 80s. I'd love that I can see the needle moving as I talk. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop the tape now. Let's see if this works. So I've managed to find some information about this. It's from 1975. Apparently wow, kind of that's really cool. I'm impressed that it still works so well. I'm definitely gonna have to run some tests on this as a tape deck, but let's keep focused. We're gonna try to use this as a distortion pedal. Let's plug in a guitar. I'm plugging the output from the tape deck into my amp because distortion always sounds better coming through amp speakers. That being said, I'm turning the preamp volume way down so that we know that none of the distortion is coming from the amp itself. I'm gonna set this to record and then I'm gonna pause it so the tape heads aren't spinning. And in theory, all I should need to do is turn up the volume, and that should produce distortion. Wow, that sounds much better than I thought it would. Okay, so we've determined that this works, but why? First, here's a quick recap on distortion for the non-guitarists. On their own, electric guitars don't produce much sound. They require amplification. When electric guitars were first introduced, the amplifiers were designed to provide the clearest possible reproduction of the guitar's natural tone. That being said, when a tube amp is presented with a signal that is louder than the volume it was designed for, it kind of lops off the top of the signal. So that's the original kind of distortion, the kind that comes from an amp. So by the late 50s, some guitarists, such as Link Ray, decided they actually kind of liked that sound. In 1962, the first fuzz pedal was introduced, the Maestro Fuzz Tone. Instead of vacuum tubes, it uses transistors, but it's designed to clip the sound in very much the same way that vacuum tubes might. 
Since then, thousands of different pedals have been produced, covering just about every different kind of distortion imaginable, and they almost all operate using the same principle. They boost the signal, and then they clip it. So, coming back to our tape deck, the reason I wanted something with a microphone jack is because any device that has a microphone input will necessarily have a little preamp built into it as well. Microphones have a fairly low volume and need to be boosted substantially in order to be heard. Guitars, on the other hand, put out a much higher volume and don't need as much of a boost. So when I plug my guitar into the microphone input, the signal will get boosted way too much and it will clip, just like in a distortion pedal. A great way to see what kind of distortion the device is producing is to pump a raw waveform into it and see what you get back. So we're starting here with a pure sine wave, and we can see that at a low volume, what we're getting back from this tape deck is that same sine wave. Now, as I boost the volume, the signal changes. We get this funny squared off waveform. It's also worth noting how asymmetrical it is. There's a lot more area below the curve than above it. The shape of the clipped waveform can vary quite a bit from pedal to pedal. Here's that same sine wave being fed into a Proco Rat. Notice how square it is. And this is the waveform for a big muff. Once again, completely different. As it happens, I actually have one more thing to show you. A few weeks ago, I went to the Philadelphia flea market, and I bought this mixer for $12. I knew I was going to be making this video, so I held off until now to try it out. Okay, let's switch to bass guitar. By the way, if you don't know what that is, you can check out this video I made a couple months ago for an explanation. So anyway, we've got these two devices, and I want to be able to compare the kinds of distortion. I've got Ableton up on my computer, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play a simple chord progression, first through the realistic mixer, and then through the tape deck from before, and then we can compare them. Here's the mixer. Here it is through the tape deck. So as we can hear, it sounds pretty different. Let's try combining them. I think they sound really good together. Let's try adding some vocals. So far I'm really liking this. Working on this project is a little bit surreal. It takes me back to the very beginnings of my experiments with audio. I guess it also takes me back to the day I became a guitarist. If 12 year old me could only see all the music tools I have access to now. I also wonder what that kid would think of this song. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed, now is a wonderful time. I've got a bunch of videos on the way. A great way to support this channel is by joining the Patreon. It's $5, and at least once a month, I upload an exclusive sample library just for patrons. Also, the song I made in this video can be purchased on Bandcamp. There's a link in the description to this video. See you soon!